complaints that I don't even blink if I'm planning a girl officer or a career manager. And I don't think that there is even a, a, a bit of, a, a, what should I say, a, a resistance from anybody for anybody for the before or even after. But that is 10 years later. So I think we've won a battle at least as far as uh, my company is concerned, but it is, it is still very small because we have a large industry which still has a big, big, big mindset. So uh, we have to keep, keep at it. And I think that the minister has done a commendable job in setting the tone and uh, we need to be able to show uh, our support. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I tell you about two things. One is the mindset and the other was the attitude of people in the show. So it's a very difficult proposition that uh, how and what needs to be done to change the mindset and attitude of people ashore to give equal opportunity to girl cadets. I again reiterated, I myself have been uh, approached a number of times when some particular companies or I am sure as just the management company said that they would prefer to have a boy cadet rather than a girl cadet. So, Anything what uh, I would like to suggest how to change this mindset of attitude of people as well. I, I think I think the uh, the the biggest ambassadors are the ones who are working now, you know, or the ones who are who are sharing examples or will talk about uh, the success they have shared, the experiences they have shared, and this is going to carry forward. And I'm sure people, uh, owners and 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 other uh, uh, people in the industry will take note of this. So I think it is through such forums and through continuous perseverance that we should be able to achieve this, uh, this, this objective. Anyway, thanks so much. Uh, can I come to you, Karan, about uh, your recruitment preferences? Do you find any preference being given to a particular gender or you are sure there is no gender difference and no discrimination at all? I reduction to promote your officers on board. Good evening everyone. Uh, first, thanks to IWSS for having me here. It's a privilege, it's an honor to be in front of such distinguished guests and to be here in this, uh, this audience and this forum, which I feel very strongly about. Uh, uh, to come to the question, uh, I, I've been uh, I'm privileged to be working with uh, Danish Chicken uh, Jack and, uh, and, and in that context, uh, in terms of gender neutrality, I think we we are quite ahead, and I think that should be a goal for uh, for the Indian or uh, the rest of the shipping world to come towards. We, we don't have any distinguishing factors between male and female. They are exactly the same to us. In fact, in terms of performance, in terms of uh, skill, which I think they are exactly the same. In fact, I would also say that uh, in, in men, you have some low performers, you have some uh, Good performers that marriage performance. It's the same thing for women. I do see personally, from my experience, I've seen same on both of them, uh, as well as uh, seeing the performance reports. I've seen that uh, they do put in that extra 200 percent, and it's uh, it's really heartening to see that they have to do that. But that is something that is required in this uh, in the current scenario. Uh, Overall, I think uh, we are all heading in the right direction from where we were 30 years ago. Uh, we mentioned the armed forces and uh, I believe uh, this year, last month, the uh, Indian Navy uh, celebrated uh, 25 years of uh, women on board ships. So, and the Navy ships, I can show you, are uh, a lot more uh, physically intensive uh, than, uh, than the virgin shipping ships. And you know, in terms of physical strength as well, of course that concept has become obsolete. No longer do you have to lift any load. But even in that concept, context, you have uh, men who are weak, men who are strong. So I don't think that's a, that's a factor that is in restricting. I think the major factor that is in restricting uh, women is the mindset. It's the mindset of all of us. Um, and it's also sometimes uh, we don't even know it. And it's also the women who have this mindset, uh, which is, yeah. Uh, Captain Kalkani asked you a specific question. 
when you take the officer signs up and reports back to the office in a normal feed. Yeah. Uh, so they can I come to you also. You now you are also working for a company. You have particularly as a customer of this item I said. Have you received any suggestions from the other officers that what your IWS should be doing or what you should be focusing to make life more conducive, more comfortable, more happy and more, I mean, work-wise satisfied to them? We have the internal surveys, we have we will take feedback from the girls and there is lot many things you know which we are still learning. I don't know why it is, you know, but in our, I mean in campus interview we are only two companies, you know, coming uh, to take new girls and all other subjects I remember mean, there was the first time, you know, second time second time when uh, they were seeing girl careers. But now after 30 years also challenges we have faced. Still, the current girls are facing, and that is what we need to improve on. And that is the reason you know we came over that only talking will not do. We need to change mindset. But by seeing mindset, we not change. We need to have something also through the procedures and policies. So that is the reason you know we actually you know uh, uh, we join you know different companies. Internally and ask again, how is a member of the particular document for it, or at least what they have, you know, currently for particular matters. And uh, uh, we, we got inspired for those companies, we got a feedback survey, and that is how, how you know, we prepare this document as a recommendation for companies to adopt in within their policy. And we are really thankful to, you know, for DC for reviewing this, uh, you know, document and uh, encouraging them. So the idea is there are companies who, who are having you know, one aspect, you know, very well, you know, something and uh, you know, tell to them. But they have in some other aspect, you know, the respect of uh, lady seeker or women seekers. So we need to actually have, you know, all those included and that's what we have done in this. And uh, with respect to this document, after giving you, your, I mean, most welcome with all kinds of feedbacks to your project. It's required we will have, you know, version 2 also for that. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wright, can I add one, one thing? Go ahead. So uh, when I joined this company, uh, I had inquired about we must press special provisions for women seafarers procedures. And it was actually suggested that uh, it, was, it was actually a surprise that why do we need special provisions? They are both equal. And you know, if you do put in something like this, it could be seen as discriminating against the men. And I think that is the way that we need to aspire to. That when it is just uh, it's out of the mind, and there's there's no difference. Yeah. Anyway, I would have preferred to have somebody from Indian administration in the panel, and I don't want to raise questions to the madam here. But nonetheless, I have an impression and what feedback we get is that after joining Matikeri, there is still a lot of waiting period for young girl cadets to get a slot on ship. I know this is not only limited to girls but it is to the boys as well. So this issue is going for a long time. Even in SA, we have discussed this, we provided some slot. But probably still much more needs to be done. Can I request, Madam, you can let them know to ease up this problem of ethics? What I'm going to add to the problem that you said, I do not agree that with your statement that I, I, I'm not in entire agreement with your statement that it happens to boys also. There was a girl who came to me one year ago and she said that, you know, I'm not getting my um, onboard internship. And uh, then I found out every single classmate of hers had got it, except her, which is one girl in the class. Then I asked the institute why they haven't organized it, and I said it's not mandatory. So I said, okay, if it is not mandatory, I'm pulling it out for the boys also. So this is the attitude that I'm talking about. And I'm going to be, since I'm on this side, I'm going to be even more passionate about my saying this is the attitude which really stinks, 
saying that you first admit the girl and then you say it is not mandatory to have the internship. Now what kind of an institute is that? What kind of a company is that? In fact, my question was going to be, is it necessary to have now a gender sensitization program all the people involved in the NTIs as well as in the industry? And I think that is more important rather than asking the administration what I will do. The administration is a regulator. It is not an employment provider. And I am not getting into this argument about the administration providing for employment. The provisions are there. If you are going to say that the internship is mandatory for boys, make it mandatory for girls. If it's not mandatory, don't give it to the boys. All you do it on merit. Have an exam and say whoever qualifies. But you can't just say the girl doesn't have to do it. When you know if she doesn't do it, she will not go further in her career. Or you take a chance that I will not admit and then we fight it out. <laughs> <laughs> Many girls have approached them to make a book and require them with the equipment and the education that one needs to be done. I am very interested in the time one of the girls in the last last few years, investigating as much as possible. We are regulating the regime, there are rules, regulations, certainly we cannot do that. But this has something to answer to the young boys in Jagger. The boys in this field are looking for that. I have mentioned in some. I have also given some public discuss in that direction. So I had no offense to make very very clear. It's still trying to make much in the platform good working uh, profession. So you all are there. Now I'll open the floor to the question and answer. So Captain, I have some questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, with my experience in, uh, in the, from the employer side, personal, uh, I would I would like to advise to change that mindset to see a little more confidence among the uh, the ladies joining the team. I'll give you a short story which I true uh, about the, the the confidence shown by uh, the ladies coming in to the seafaring uh, you know profession. We had, when I was in shipping corporation as executive director of uh, three person, a young lady came saying that we want to own a job as a chief engineer. So the, my first question is, have you saved as a chief engineer? She said, no. So now this is becoming, when I looked at her, I said, I feel pretty confident we're going to be going as a lady. And I think that was the first uh, lady we had in, uh, in SCI who was working as a chief engineer. And then I asked her, are you feeling confident? Are you able to handle those young uh, engineers that you went uh, through? She said, yes. I said, are you sure? She said, yes. You will never handle the job. So I just called the, uh, the manager, engineering, said, just take her and that's enough. That's enough of confidence and an attitude. And that young lady was swimming to If you had not shown the confidence, perhaps I would have bought into that feeling that you may not, and that's where the problems come on board the ship. When she showed the confidence, I was one. Now, in the 2003, we, we first, in the big personal department in CI, we first started taking the uh, girl cadets. There were three of them. One was uh, Sujmeha Garapande. And one was uh, Anuradha Jab, they are masters now. So I see the confidence, I see the ambition, the the, the they wanted to go with a master. But I said, do you know what it uh, you know entails? You know, it's not easy. They were very confident and they said, sir, we showed you that we are going to be masters. So I said, this is a little precarious situation. So I said, you please call one of your parents. Because so they, they were the first three. Because they are masters now. So when the parents came, told them, see this, and then you know it was that 50-50. Uh, but when the girl showed confidence, the parents got confident, I got confident, everybody got confident, and that's when it happened. Another very small story. When I was in charge of the MTI in, in, in Hawaii, SCI MTI. 
I heard that there was a girl at 5.30 in the morning she was jogging and she was jogging alone. 5.30 in the morning she was jogging around a while. So I said, so I said, you are going there. I asked one of the faculty, she goes alone uh, jogging. He says, yeah, yeah, nothing will happen to her. She is very confident. So I said, what do you mean by that? She says, one of the boys was, was teasing her, troubling her. She gave him one whiff on her nose and off the two or three of his teeth fell down. I'm not suggesting the girls going to that on four ashes. And don't wait to have a question. But I'm just saying, that's it. That's, that type of girls, they can manage. They, they are meant to be on ships along with the boys. They show that they can take, uh, nobody can take advantage of them. They can take advantage of themselves and their careers. Now that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have no gyan, no tricks. Just what Sumiti said and what Captain Nathar said, I'll carry on from there. It's the attitude that is and apprehensions see very challenging. Uh, you spoke something about Ebert Anchor, correct? I remember I was looking after the tank of tea and Suniti might not be knowing. It was somewhere before 2010? Yes. Yes. And one of the functions, I think it was National Maritime, the theme was related to women in shipping. And in that function, I did comment that at present, on that day, there is a liner crack and there is a lady chief engineer who is changing the liner on the ship. I acknowledge Suniti that I am not People said nice things about SCI, always good to hear those things having been in the SCI family. Next, I would like to very small talk about Radhika. I have been very closely associated with her. Yes, she did face challenging challenges, but she was determined. There was a resistance. She wanted tankers. In the top management, in the senior management, we want to promote. But at the operational level, there is issue. There are apprehensions that she will not be able to deliver. Sir, she is going for dry dog, the chain, tank cleaning has to be done. And so then Radhika used to come back to me, sir, they are not, they are saying that. So I had to push. I, okay, some sacrifices have to be made for a bigger cause, if that is so. So that is how, well, I, I confess, resistance was there, difficulties was, were there, difficulties were there, but Radhika was very focused, and that's the way he went there. You know, basically her determination, I know, posting a girl as a master of chief engineer on a
to, to answer Mr. Gupta. What would you say about a medical doctor in her 50s entering uh, the shipping business and going into a double bottom tank? Great. Wonderful. Thank you. I have invited you on a ship to be in a double bottom tank along with a lady circle. That was a privilege. Somebody who is a survey, I'm telling you about a medical doctor. Okay? <laughs> That's what I did to prove the point of the lady. Okay, so I have that. Can I ask one question? Please go you're on the road. <laughs> you were asking so questions I, to us? Yeah, yeah, I'm asking questions here because it's wonderful to see this panel with different representations. The one representation that I, I would love to hear, I don't know if you have anybody in the audience, who has actually sailed with a lady seafarer on board. And for that, seafarer will tell us his experience with a lady seafarer on board. Do we have anybody here in the audience? Please raise the hand. You have sailed. Yes. Okay. I would like to hear that experience. We have three crew guys here. Yeah. Please raise the hand. I think that's important because somebody passed the mic, please. Yeah. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so. So uh, I said actually twice with uh, uh, lady officers, when I was second engineer. So two was the uh, junior engineers and one I said that uh, when the lady was both engineers. What I observed uh, definitely they are they are doing really good job and sometimes I found they are better also, okay, much more sincere, much more focused and uh, you know, much more determined. So that was my observation. Okay. Yes. Regarding the challenges they faced on board, what I see, you know, uh, we all know that shipping is a male dominated uh, uh, business, okay. So the challenges were there, you know, the people were uh, much more involved in knowing what the lady does after the working hours, not what the what she does in working hours. Okay. So those were the challenges what they face actually. And also the sometimes what happens, you know, being a senior officer sometimes, you know, when you see the master and chief engineer, they also try to play a role of other figures. Okay. So that is the time. When we used to say everyone is alert, everyone is, you know, the same, so we should be very good. So that is the one. So that's the challenge of the men's face. That is the challenge of the girls' face. No, that, that, that there were people treating them like the fatherly figure. Father figure, yeah. They never do with the male uh, uh, yes. characters. Yes. Uh, yes. They try to do with the female characters. And that should not happen. It really yes. should not happen. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure our ladies out here have a lot of questions and you encourage all of them to ask. Yeah, uh, well, uh, the first time uh, we were having a lady on board uh, as an officer, there was a lot of buzz about how and there was a lot of talk, you know, what's going to be. But uh, all that initial uh, hoo-ha and all that, that settles down quite soon. And, and we are professional. And I think having a uh, woman around you in your environment, especially in a male dominated environment, brings a very good balance, balancing factor into the equation. You know, the, uh, your decisions, I feel, are better because they bring about perspectives that we don't directly uh, see. And, you know, it's a well-known fact that a woman's brain and a man's brain work differently, and we need both sides to, uh, to get a solid decision. So uh, definitely, initially there was a bit of uh, promotion, but I think that died down very soon. And 
if you say with one uh, the same thing, you know, after that it's all very normal. It's, it's all very professional. I want to add a little, uh, share a little small story uh, on a lighter note of things. And this is going back probably 50 years. Uh, when my father of Kodani, when in, in, in the office, I think at some point in time, I of course don't know this because I was young at that time. Uh, basically, we had only men in the office, okay, at, at the a shop. Uh, and, uh, and this is even probably before the time that we were only, we were only in shipping, we were in other businesses also. And at some point in time, one or two ladies were brought into the office. And my father noticed something very interesting and then said to maybe my mother or to someone else and said, you know, I like having ladies in the office because the other men tend to dress much better than we, since we started having ladies in the office. I think I'm not good one. Just pick up from actually what Mr. Gupta referred to a couple of years back. We have this uh, National Maritime Day or some such uh, event where women seafarers. Yes, yes, yes. I made a presentation there and uh, I've invited to. So I did a bit of research. Um, one interesting thing came out was through the legislation, uh, Merchant Shipping Act, etc., are not geared up for uh, addressing. Uh, females or ladies in the uh, environment, most of the environment. So much so that when Canada promoted their first master marina, this is way back in the middle of last century, they realized the shortcomings of the Merchant Shipping Act and they had to amend it to actually uh, address you know, seafarers as well, uh, gender neutral rather than men. Uh, the, I don't know, Indian versus shipping act if you reached uh, maybe even that state of thinking, but perhaps uh, all or no he. No more No more he or she. So, yeah. So, going further, actually, all that we are seeing here about seafarers, if you look a little bit above the surface, we are seeing seafarers only, further seafarers only as support, excuse me at operational or maybe managerial level, not at support level. We aren't even talking about that yet. Or maybe story. But I'd like to see the day when seafarers can be in support level people. So Sumiti has something to say here. I'm coming uh, right on to Sumiti now. Sir, to, to your comment, actually, you know, uh, we also have this problem
theme was connecting ships, ports, and people, and this year it's the theme is celebrating its 70th anniversary. Next year, it's all about women. So your timing is fantastic. So the IMO will be focusing on women and shipping next year, and your timing is perfect for this. In a previous part of my life, when I was doing commercial work, I created a company called Newsweek. And it was the first time people had an electronic crew newspaper on board. And I felt the burden of doing that correctly, or else the next time it came through, four or five years from now, someone would say, oh, we tried that, didn't work, move on to the next one. And I feel that same challenge that you will have um, as you go through. And let passion be your guide, as Dr. Sharma and Dr. Talani um, advised you. Um, and this will guide you, and be there, be first, be the best, because you're the pioneer still. It might be there for 10 years, but you're going to have a very enjoyable part of your journey if you do this with passion. And it's not so much the milestones you'll look back on, as I'm in my second year looking back more than I'm looking forward, but um, it's, it was the part of the journey those aspects that happen in them that you will enjoy more. So live it fully, open up, be very passionate about it. Your pioneers coming through, and we look forward to putting you in that. As an IMO ambassador, a maritime ambassador, our main focus is to increase the awareness of the good work the maritime industry is doing to the non-maritime community. There are things that we in the maritime industry just can't do alone. Unfair criminalization of seafarers, denied safe ports of refuge, seafarers being held hostage for ransom. We need the non maritime community to come in and help us to, challenge, to overcome these challenges so that seafarers will have a safer, higher quality of life. We have a couple of tools to do that. One is called the Adoptership Program, it's a free program. We're just starting to launch this now with the Maritime Awareness Program Society here in Mumbai. It consists of a seafarer exchanging an email with the classroom once a week, and the teacher then shares that information with the students. They follow the ship on a road map, and they talk to the captain, and we expanded it into orphanages, shelters, and underprivileged children in schools. So we have some tools, and it's vitally important that we all become ambassadors for the industry to go out and tell the world the good news of what you're doing and to impress on them the importance of the maritime community, particularly the importance of the seafarers. So I wish you a very, very exciting career. It's going to be where you make it. You put your passion into it, and as Dr. Uh, Shammer and Dr. Talani mentioned, put in 200%, I guarantee you, you'll get back 1,000%. It's a really satisfying career. We welcome you into it. The IMO, again, is looking forward to you being in there. Next year is going to be your year, so your timing is absolutely fantastic. So I wish you very good session. Thank you, Mr. Hanks. And let's just to substantiate what he said. The year 2019 has been declared as empowering of women in the maritime community by IMO. So next year's theme for the entire year will be empowering women in the maritime community. Thanks to I know him. Now can I have two questions from the lady cadets or lady officers if they have anything to add to what we have been deliberating? You are watching sailor today. I think uh, I'll throw back and ask a question to the ladies which Captain Sharma has been Sorry? Sir, from the ladies' side, I have one. Actually, I'm sure all these ladies might be wondering during our so many discussions. We have repeatedly pointed out the fact that if one of us doesn't perform well, it definitely affects the rest of us. And we're all wondering, is it possible for 120 or 150 to be right at all times? And uh, would you consider hold up to that and uh, not consider the rest? And they were talking to me, I'm sure I have been in that situation earlier. And then when uh, I passed out in 2003 and there was such long sessions to not go, I don't want to mention the company or the people. I have an answer. Yeah, lady, why are you really thinking that or not? 
Don't worry so much about that part of it. There are going to happen situations where you may not be able to cope with them. That happens. What you are in control of is your passion, your attention. You do it with a good heart, do it with passion, it'll be fine. Don't put that type of pressure on yourself. Nobody's perfect. Look, you can control those things. There's things we can control, things we can't control. That's within you, and you all have it. Just do that and you'll get there. It's not your, you know, it's nothing, there's nothing called doing it right, doing it wrong. It's what you know, you know how to do it right, but how do you handle unforeseen situations on the board? For the first drop of a hat, do you go running and complain, or do you say, I will handle it literally and I will make the best of this? Those are the kinds of things that comes with experience and maturity. So don't worry about what is right and what is wrong. But if the girl goes and says, you know, this fellow is not talking to me, he's teasing me, then the captain is going to say, these girls are on like this, let go. And this is not unique to, again and again, I'm trying to say, this is not unique to see things. Being with human beings as a lady is common across all those so don't keep worrying about I don't see fellow. Yes, you are in a ship, you are bound there for many days, but an office is no more free. I can tell you that. And you will tell that from any of the women who are working in offices. You are dealing with the same people in the same room, in the same office, day after day. Just because you can go home, there is a relief. That's about it, but it's all in the mind for you. Thank you, ma'am. I'd, I'd like to add to what Dr. Shankar you just said and to clarify, clarify what Mr. Bani uh, said. It's not about doing right or wrong in your actual professional piece of your <coughs> job. That's not what, I, at least not what I was talking about. It's something of what uh, the gentleman there, I didn't get your name, said. In a situation where, for example, the master was being very fatherly towards the lady, okay? to me that is a big no no. In a situation like this, the lady has to stand up and say, I don't need your fatherly protection. Because that makes her stand out among the men, and that's where things go wrong. It is those kind of things that one should not allow to happen on board. And that the others, were, this was a great example that we put forward. That's the kind of thing that we're talking about. Actually, I was referring to one. Yeah, uh, just to add, I think that's a uh, really great piece of advice for the women's aid I just want to add from a different angle. When we are seeing gender neutral employment and gender neutral uh, you know, atmosphere, it should be also applicable to these unfortunate incidents. So what happens when some of that unfortunate incidents happen with a woman, it goes with the speed of fire and people end up telling that if there is a smoke, it means there was a fire. So we need gender neutral care also. If men can do mistake, women also can do mistake. Let's not make a big fuss about it. Let's be gender neutral care also. Girls can also do mistakes. We are trying to be perfect, but no one is perfect. So there also we need gender neutral care. That's my saying. And this should be. Yeah. I would not agree with that. Uh, initially, 10 years back, or uh, more than 10 years, when we started off, we had similar issues. Issues like what gentleman mentioned about somebody being too fatherly. So that was actually going against the girl get it. And also things such as what you mentioned, that there was this one mistake made by uh, one girl, and there it was. So, like I told you, you know, we should be having these little uh, number. But we stood up against that. We persevered and we have 30 now instead of 1. So I think uh, very soon we will have 120 and uh, how the more we go. So, so let's keep at it and I think uh, there's a very important, uh, very, very important problem. Anyway, what I will do, we are running shorter time now. I would like to thank Guy Devon myself for so organizing this today's seminar. And thank you all for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you to be interacting with you all because it is present. We also have a lot of questions. This will be the last question of the day. Thank you, sir. I'm Rudika. I'm working for volunteer management as a guide right now. So I work on a real thing.
there was like challenging questions like when we work, is there like you are a girl guide, why, why you want to work? Yeah, unfortunately, you will get married and you will go to the So that's the problem we face on board, mostly. So the circumstances are like, uh, like uh, most of the officers say like, unfortunately you will get married and you don't have to learn so many things. Just speak for it and do the paperwork. So when we have to work and learn the, on the field, on the deck, so they said, no, just, just keep aside. That, that's the man's job. So what we have to do in that situation, how we need to deal with that? So sometimes we, if we raise the question on that, then they say, how can you say on that like that? That is a difference in attitude also, that the, the difference in also in the, the similarity. That exactly, basically the mindset and attitude of the generation that you have grown up with has changed. Actually, on the showbiz industry, you will find this has been immediately taken care of. Put in the best of my knowledge in every family, unless both husband and wife works, they are neither comfortable in their life or their work. During my time, I matter now, my mother and her work. So, both of the days are gone by. So, now probably there will be some time, but this question that why you need to work, to my mind, is a little outdated. Also, regarding uh, some of the questions about what happens to you and the two you don't get married, don't worry about that. Uh, we have uh, uh, a second leader of our company, I think this, and this is very good, who's carrying a husband and super in the ocean, so don't be taking
and I don't lose a plan to capture the end game.
क्या Look at the camera. Smile. One, two. One sec. Look at the camera. One, two. One more. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. One more, one more, one more. Back, back. The other girl. One, two. Thank you. ये पकड़ ना पाल बैठ ले मैं रिक्वेस्ट और नाउ टू प्लीज प्रोसीड फॉर द हाइटीज इट्स अरेंज्ड आउटसाइड थैंक यू So friends, that was an amazing session from Sailor Today TV. What do you guys think about today's event? Do let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Stay tuned to Sailor Today TV. We will be back after a short break with CMMI's monthly lecture meeting. See you there.